You know, I'm really learning to hate the way that people deal with crystalline cares and Usa. Okay, I'm up at a unicorn, and as you come in, if you could please like the video, I would appreciate that so much. So I've witnessed Crystal and Karis and could ask a lot of questions, and one of them is, why do you not promote the um, interracial dating and marriage of white women and black men the way you promote that of African American women and Caucasian American men? And my answer to that, of course, she was like, you know, frazzled. There's obviously a guy with a lot of bass in his voice calling her names like bed wench and white man, ass kisser and, and, and all kinds of things I'd rather not say on my channel. But I mean, wouldn't that make her a manosphere content creator if that's what she did all day? Wouldn't, isn't that what she would be? You're asking her to be... <laughs> I mean, all of the manosphere, there are so many people who promote. I mean, you have these people from all over the world, whether they're Caribbean, African-American, from the UK, it's telling people that they shouldn't be with black women. Black women are German shepherds and they're dogs and they're pigs and they're animals and they need to be annihilated and, and all these different things. So I'm like, okay, so you guys already have that front covered. It's already covered. She doesn't need to reinvent the wheel. So her message is, I mean, she is a black female teacher of black female students. So no, she doesn't have a male audience where she's just going to go around promoting, you know, this and that for men. She's promoting things for women. Just like the Manosphere is a group of men who are a bunch of, you know, self-proclaimed male teachers who are promoting ideas, including that of interracial dating and marriage to a class of black males. Are we really going to pretend like we don't remember Tariq Nasheed telling thousands of men that they should be with biracial women with white mothers because if they get with the ones with black mothers, they're going to end up acting like uh, their black mama and that that is undesirable. And you have so many of these pro-black men who want a woman who is half seas or, you know, quadroon, octoroon, light bright, almost white. And it's just like, dude, we get the message. You don't like our big noses and nappy hair. And even if we're good enough to be a baby mama, we're not good enough to be a wife. I mean, with all these, you know, this out of wedlock birth rate. But at the same time, like, here's the lie. They're like, oh, the majority of black men marry black women. The majority of black men are not even married. Can you start there? The majority of black men, Afro-American men, right? Foundational Black Americans, ADOS, DACS, okay? The Malcolm X's, Martin Luther King's, Medgar Evers, you know, the, the, us. The majority of our men are not married. Only 40-something percent of our men are even married. And of that 40 percent, so you got the 100 percent, right? And then you got the 40% out of that 100% who are actually married. And then you got 20% of that who are interracially married. Now, of course, it's more than 40. It's like 46, 47% of African American men that are actually married. But still like the, the so yes, it, it is true that the majority of them that are married are married to African American women. But it's like, first of all, the brothers are not even getting married. They don't even find marriage worth, <laughs> worth engaging in. They don't find value in it. So they're not doing it. The majority of African American men are not getting married. So when they're telling all these black women, you're going to die alone, you're going to die alone. It's just like, dude, you're not married either. Real talk. You're not married either. Who else is dying alone? You, you, you're talking into a mirror. So cut that out. Cut that out. But it's really sad to me that it's like you have... I don't know what, what in the disingenuous intellectual dishonesty heck is going on with some of these men who come face to face with crystal and charism. But I'm just like, tell the truth. Y'all interracially date at nearly three times and marry at nearly three times the rate that we do. So why are you mad at us now that we're picking up your habits and now that we're saying, all right, you're gone with the wind. Now I am too. Why are you upset? You don't want Gabarisa to be. Tell, tell the truth. Leave her to her white man. You didn't want her. You're not going to pick her over, you know, biracial so-and-so, you know, you're, you're not going to do it. 
you're not going to honor her, value her. I mean, if you have the choice between her and, you know, I, I don't know. <sighs> I, I, I can't even name anyone uh, off of the top of my head. Um, if you had a choice between her and a biracial woman, I mean, we know what chances are you would pick. And I mean, even if they were the same size, I've seen dark skin, phenotypically Afro-American women who are great women get passed over for mixed women who are nowhere near their level. And I do mean that. And it's a frequent thing. I mean, when you can go from Philadelphia to California to North Dakota to South Virginia, West Virginia, North Virginia, like whatever those things are, Louisiana, Tennessee, uh, Kentucky, Idaho, like in, in all the African-American people know the compliment pretty for a dark skin girl. You cute to be so dark. That means something. And when you gaslight us and tell us it means nothing, it creates hostility and then it, it becomes it, it, it become it goes from being a conversation to where we that we want to have with you to well f you then you're not gonna have me looking at a white wall and trying to convince me it's pink like i'm out of here like don't do that stop with these lying statistics stop saying the majority of african-american men are married to african-american women because the majority of african-american men are not married are not married the majority of african-american men are not married the, say it with me the majority of african-american men are not married only 40 something percent of african-american men are married and of that 40 something percent 20 percent of them are married out uh, to non-black women period just stop it so don't ask Crystal and Karen to promote what is already doing very well. You know, don't ask me that that, that becomes like, oh my God. How do I, how do I do this? What is it like the all lives matter thing? Like, like with the all houses matter. Like I'm not worried about your house. That's not on fire. When this one is clearly on fire, you're not going to get me to put my water hose on your house when you have no flame. And this one does like, stop it. And here's the deal. There's nothing wrong with it. My favorite, one of my favorite aunts that I, I that I've ever had in my life is white. Another one, Korean. Like, don't get me started, okay? Like, I'm not one of these people who like no, it interracial for you, interracial for her, interracial for him. Hey, me, I'm with a black man. However, I, if it's where you are happy, I love it for you. I have a concern about black women. I have a concern for their happiness. I have a concern about them being left behind. I have a concern for their reputation. I have a concern for their promotion. I have a concern with the fact that they get put down so much. And I have a concern for changing their image and getting them to places where they can be honored as other women are. I have a problem with them being on the bottom. And so it is in my best interest. It is in my mother's best interest. It is in the best interest of black women to elevate them into good relationships and good positions and good status. It's in our best interest to do that with, with one another. And if we don't want to be with some felon having high school, felony having high school dropout, whatever it is, and then, then that's our business. And if you want to be like me with some master's degree having black belay mason, like, okay, and, and that's your business. And that's your business. But I mean, when you sit up here and lie to us and act like 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 we're just, oh, you're you're abandoning this race that just loves you and coddles you and thinks the most of you. And we just give y'all everything. And we just love African-American women so much. Yeah, if we're mixed. Yeah, if our mom is white, isn't that right, Tariq Nasheed? And, and uh, my partner told me to stop calling people's name. I really need to work on that. Y'all forgive me. But I mean, look, like, it's like, it's like we're not even mad anymore. But it's like when we try to talk to you on some brother sister stuff and you call us all kind of, you know, bad winches and B words and nasty names and broads and, and you yell at us and you talk real mean to us. And then, you know, we get frazzled and you laugh at our feminine nature. Like, yeah, we're going to get frazzled when some guy with a bunch of bass in his voice is yelling at us. 
and we're trying to get a point across and it's just like okay well maybe we can you know blame the women for even calling in because i know that's personally what i do when women call into some of these shows i'm just like look why did you do this to us why did you do this to all of us okay you as an african-american woman what woman why are you calling into the show why are you humiliating all of us the millions of us stop calling these men they hate you they want nothing to do with you they look down on you they girl i just it, it's a terrible thing to to witness what is going on in our community at this point i would love to see black men and women in healthy relationships but when they cannot do that when that black man is a colorist or when that black man would i mean can't wait to replace you with i mean you could be a black church church girl who's got her ba and you know 20 something years old and get replaced with a vietnamese prostitute nothing against vietnamese women please do not get me wrong i come from a very viet community and it's probably why it's the first thing that came up into my mind i come from a place in seattle where there are over 66 national languages spoken and it is actually the most diverse place in america in america in america so that particular uh um, 98118 area, uh, area code, right? So in reality, if you want to talk states, like sure, you know, New York and Texas and blah, blah, blah are more diverse. But if you're talking about just like area, like per area, like good God, we have the most diversity in that area. So please don't get me wrong. But part of coming from there has really informed my opinion about, I don't give a, I don't give a crap about who you're with. I mean, there are mixed babies all over the Pacific Northwest and not very many black babies. And I'm just like, you know what? High five. Let me dap you up. Like I'm coming to the birthday party and I'm throwing rice at the wedding. Like I don't give as long as you have a healthy relationship. And no, it's not healthy to be told you're pretty for a dark skinned girl. Not. Nah, it's not healthy to be, you know, if some guy doesn't like, you know, quote unquote, nappy hair and Afro textured hair and wide noses, don't be with him no like like don't be his placeholder don't be hit no let him wait for his game changer let him have a place you guys this is becoming a futile conversation i really don't know what this gender war is about anymore because i i guess i'm not where other people are with it because my thing is high five to you and your white wife high five to you and your asian wife like and i mean it but I'm going to high five my sister too. If she's with a black man, Asian man, white man, Tongan man. I mean, black women love these Uso brothers. Oh my goodness. Like all women love these Uso brothers because they contain all that masculinity and those traditions, yada, yada. Like even when they were walking around like with a little clique, they had a little black girl in their clique, a little wrestler. She's adorable. Um, look, we're not a... Well, maybe some people are upset. Let me take that back because I can't say we're not upset just because I'm not upset. I cannot make myself the the rule, okay? When in reality, apparently, I'm, I'm feeling feelings that are the exception because I, I, oh my God, I don't care. I, I really don't care. I really prefer for everybody to go where they want to be and not just where they want to be, but where they are celebrated and accepted and not tolerated only to be rejected. That is how I really and truly feel. And so I'm not the type of person. I'm not going to praise white men over black men because men are men. I'm not going to praise black women over, you know, Asian women because well, women are freaking women. Okay. Like, do I have a vested interest in African-American women because I am one? You betcha. And no, I'm not sorry about it. Every group feels that way about themselves. And if you don't, there's a self-esteem problem that you need to figure out. But I mean, there is good and bad in every group. There are trifling exists in all colors. Trifling exists in all nations and in all languages beauty grace talent love it exists in all cultures all languages and in all nations it, it's it's just the reality so i i, I can't do this for you I, I can't make these things make sense i can't make you come to grips and terms and kumbaya come to jesus moments with swirlers if you don't like them don't talk to them but i mean why obsess over these people that you don't want anyway i mean i'm looking at crystal and karazin and i see that she's a very beautiful woman but you know they're talking about this wall and this 47 years old and you know these grown kids or whatever then why do you care about her why do you care why do you talk to her I mean, if you think that she is just so low and so, you know, past the wall, why do you care? Why do you troll? 
I mean, they do the same thing with Shira. All these guys stay in her chat. And I'm just like, well, why do you care? Because you really do feel dusty, don't you? Because you really do feel like you can't get a woman with her, get a woman like her, don't you? That's a problem for you. And that's why you hang around. Because if you were really as nonchalant and, you know, Lizzie Fair and, and K Sarah Sarah about the whole thing, then like, wh why would you make so much time in your day to be so hateful? And to be such a troll and to be so obsessive about this topic of hypergamy or leveling up or swirling, whatever it is. Like, what do you care? Especially if you don't want these women anyway. I mean, I've had so many men. I've, I've heard and seen so many men in the black manosphere, like, just talk crazy about not just my skin color, but of other women's skin colors who belong to their same race. And, and these men are very dark. So chances are me and these other women are the colors of their mothers. And I'm just like, okay, so you hate your mom and you've got daddy issues. I don't want to be with you. Now, it just so happens, you know, my partner loves his mom and his parents were married and we're some big old Negroes and we're happy. I'm very happy that I'm happy, but I also recognize that that is not the reality for everybody. And who my partner is and who I am as a woman, that's not the reality for everybody. So by all means, go find your reality wherever you find it. I don't care if it's a Martian, okay? At this point, I mean, I don't care if it's Anunnaki. I don't care if it's a Pleiadian. Like, <laughs> guys, I don't care. I mean, as long as it's consenting adults and there's no abuse of children or other human beings or animals, like, I mean boo like like boo hoo like boo to you you know like look you guys i'm i'm getting out of character because i'm obviously i'm vexed i'm annoyed i find this i find this a nuisance i find the hypocrisy i find the gaslighting to be a nuisance we know the truth we know that some of these women yes i know beautiful dark-skinned women who are paired with beautiful african-american men but the strangest thing sometimes when i see them the man is always lighter than them because for some reason, a lot of lighter toned African-American men don't necessarily have an issue with colorism. It doesn't mean that they all don't, but I find that light skinned African-American men have less of an issue with colorism when it comes to women than do dark skinned African-American men. Crucify me, right? Because I said it, right? Even though you know it, even though you know it, because they also suffer from colorism, right? Sometimes darker African-American men treat them like, you know, they can just kind of loke up on, you know, some light-skinned guy with gray eyes and red hair because they, they associate being light-skinned with being effeminate. And some of the toughest guys you'll ever meet are these like red Negroes. I mean, red like Malcolm X or red like the character from, you know, uh, uh, the five heartbeats because, or red like Angel <laughs> Ramirez Jordan, because they get picked on by people because people are like, oh, you're so pretty. And it's like, bro, I've been getting picked on like this all my life. I will lay you out. And I'm just like, I'm not going to say it to a light skinned guy that that doesn't exist. I'm not going to gaslight him and tell him his experiences are invalid. And you shouldn't be telling dark-skinned women that their experiences are invalid either. Like, you should be honest about the culture that we're in and the solutions that are being put forth. And if you don't like the solution, then don't engage them. Don't use them. But yes, I think people like Crystal and Charism and Cheer Star Goddess and, and so many other people that I watch, they are actually bringing solutions for African-American women. And here's the deal. Maybe not all of their solutions work for this certain group of African-American men. To be honest, I think, Lord... Baby's going to be so mad at me for saying this because I really do get myself into hot water. But it seems like the Negro manosphere is like a really angry with happily married, successful black men. They're really angry with black men who are happily paired with black women and have black children and have their businesses and their lives together. Like they, they seem really antagonistic towards those men. Like, oh, you're happily married to a woman. Simp, simp, simp. And I'm like, good God, like, like you guys are shunning people for having good family manners and, and family values and structure. What is this? You can't expect us not to want to run from that. That is poison. That is killing people. Yeah, it's killing people. It's tearing apart families. People are in foster care systems because people don't value family anymore. And yeah, I mean, look, <sighs> these people love to say, oh, well, black women are raising the men that they're tired of and they complain about. But then you don't want to hear Kendall and St. Charles when she says, all right, well, stop having them. You don't want to hear that. 
You want to ha ha ha. You're you're giving birth to the men that, that don't like you and the men that you find problematic. But then when she says, all right, cut that birth stuff out. Cut it out. Y'all are like, oh, genocide. I'm like, okay, but when the guy said that we all need to be exterminated, the black man is for a content creator who I won't name that said African-American women who are boomers, millennials, and Gen Xers all need to be exterminated. I mean, there wasn't a show about that. There wasn't some big call-in and, and drag from one man to another. There was no accountability for that. But uh-oh, a woman said something. Uh-oh, a woman wants to swirl. Like, as much as y'all talk about how swirlers are damaged goods and how you don't want them anymore once they've touched a white man, why do you care? Why do you care? And, you know, Kristalyn Karazin is obviously a very physically attractive woman. And there are people who will try to be like, well, you're 47 and that's subjective. And I'm just like, dude, you know she's pretty. Because in reality, if she was, you know, Gruhilda or, you know, the ogre version of Shrek's Princess Fiona, like... You'd just be laughing at her. You wouldn't care what her message is. And I've seen you guys do that to other women on YouTube. I've seen you guys take women who are overweight or unattractive, whatever, and not care about their message. And then maybe some woman who was packaged in a way that you like, you know, comes with the same message. And oh my God, it's, it's, it's genius. So, I mean, YouTube, we got to talk and we got to move in a new direction. We got to create a new algorithm over here because um, a lot of this stuff is unhealthy and we're getting too grown and too old to keep engaging in the same conversations for three and four years at a time. Like, all right, we don't agree. Why does there need to, why does there need to be a debate? Debate for what? Debate for what? Just go and be happy in your rhetoric. Go and be happy in your perspective. Go and be merry in your worldview. Live in it, die in it. Be resurrected and answer to God for it. I don't know. But just just, just go. Everybody go their way and be happy. All right. I'm up in a corner. I'm all done ranting.